Hey guys, welcome back to Project 2. A little backstory here. I stumbled across machinable waxes, wax uh, filament, specifically for casting a while back. And, and if you watch any of my videos, you know I do a lot of uh, 3D printing to metal casting videos. And I thought it looked pretty cool. One of the issues with PLA is that it takes a long time to burn it out of your mold. And it also leaves a kind of a sooty residue that transfers to your castings. So I thought that, you know, hey, this would be perfect for the type of stuff that I do. I reached out over the Machinable Wax and asked if I could get a sample for a review. Wes over there was kind enough to provide me this one kilogram roll of uh, their print to cast filament. If you've seen any of my recent videos, you'll notice that all of them have been this blue, which is this print to cast filament. And, uh, after printing out several things for about a month now, I figure it's about time to do a review on it. So let's get started. Let's go over and take a look what the roll looks like and jump into it. So here's what the filament looks like. This is a one kilogram spool, uh, which is surprisingly a lot of filament. Uh, probably because it's less dense and lighter than regular PLA, so there's more in the spool. Uh, because I've had lots and lots of prints and as you can see I'm maybe halfway through the spool. Uh, the filament is very wax like I, you know I know it's uh, machinable wax and stuff like that but I wasn't actually expecting it to be as wax like it is it is almost like a flexible filament not like plastic at all um, and I'll get into the um, you know the how it is as far as wax and, and the benefits of that later. Let's get into the ugly first. Uh, the ugly is if you are new to 3D printing and or you do not have the time to fool with print settings, you just want things to print, um, and even if you want to cast them, then PLA is the way to go. These are just a sample of the failed prints that I had starting off. Now some of these are okay. Um, and some of these aren't. Now this this is fine. This was just a test. It's a, a cap that go on a um, aluminum can, like a beer can or something like that. To, I guess keep flies or something out of it. I don't know. It's part of a Memorial Day um, video that I was gonna do. I may still do it. Anyways, um, and the, this came out good. The fidget spinners, um, a couple of them came out okay. I mean, eventually I got one, but you can see this one's bent a little bit. Um, the Pirates of the Caribbean coins, a couple of them came out okay. The Avengers logo, um, this one starts separating off the bed. And I'll get into the specific issues that I had, but basically it, it, my point is, is if you do not want to fool around with print settings, this is not the, the filament for you. Um, if you do and you don't mind, you've been 3D printing for a while, then I'm sure you can stumble your way through it and get a good print eventually. Uh, like this one came out really great. Uh, unfortunately, I tried melting the, the wax to smooth it out, which is one benefit of, of using wax is that you, know, you can heat it very slightly and smooth it out rather than using like an acetone or something like that. So let's get into the issues that I found and how to correct them and how to get this filament to work correctly. All right, print settings. Let's get into what Machinable Wax recommends. They provide a piece of paper, some instructions on using this filament, and I'll just read off what they recommend. Extrusion temperature, 140C to 150C. Bed temperature, 65C to 75C. They note some have printed with cold beds. Shells 2 to 3, print speed is typically 20 to 70 millimeters a second, and then they say prints best when layers have enough time to cool. And they mention you may be having a sacrificial pillar or something like that. So let's go through my print settings that I've had success with. Layer height 0.1 to 0.2. I've had 0.1 uh, millimeter prints and they came out just fine, no issues. Shell thickness, I'm at two shells right now. Um, you could do one shell. I think that would be too thin. I don't think I've even tried one shell. Uh, but I found that the, the thinner the shell, the better. So one shell may actually even work better, although I think it would end up cracking or layer separations. There's just not enough material to hold it together. Bottom fill, this is important. 
um, with getting it to stick to the bed thin. You want it thin. So I've set it the same as my top shell thickness, uh, two, two layers basically, or two uh, thicknesses. And fill density is also very important. And one of my biggest mistakes when I first started, I usually do a fill density of 20%, depending on the model. And that's the problem is, is that there's too much material inside the model. And as it cools, it contracts and pulls up the layers or pulls it up off the bed. So the least amount of fill density you can have, the better. If you can do a zero fill, then do it. That's the best way of doing it. Um, print speed. I'm currently at 40 with this cube I'm printing. I'll show you at the end of this in, in this video. Um, I usually print around 15 millimeters per second. That's what I found has worked best. Although I printed one of those Pirates of the Caribbean coins the other day at 60 millimeters per second and it printed out just fine. Though that print is very low. It's not a tall print so that may have had something to do with it. Printing temperature is probably one of the most important things and one of the biggest things I've played with. I've gone all the way down from 130C up to 150C. Uh, 140 to 145 is where I find I get the best amount of uh, success, success. And with the lower temperatures, I find I get layer separation. Uh, with the higher temperatures, poor print quality, it's just smearing it all over the place. So. Uh, bed temperature 70 degrees. I've gone from 70 to gosh uh, a lot higher I think and I found 70 to 75 degrees works best. I even tried where I only had the bed heated um, during the, the first layer and it's important to have a heated bed when you're putting down that first layer. If you have a cool bed for without the first layer it won't stick. It flat out won't stick. So also going back to printing temperature, I run the Skynet firmware on my ANA A8 and by default it will not let you set, set the printing temperature that low. I think by default it is the, the minimum you can print is 160 and there's a command that you can put in, I had to research it, to change that uh, printing temperature minimum. And if you're curious about that, leave a comment below, I can look it up and respond back to you on what that command was and how I changed it. It was like a month ago, so I don't remember. Um, support type. Honestly, the support, uh, you got to play with. Uh, I've printed a couple models that need support, and um, it's like hit or miss on that. It, the problem is it's the filament's so weak, it, it just generally doesn't work very good. Uh, brim is absolutely mandatory. I found you have to have a brim, and the bigger the brim, the better. Uh, one of the biggest issues with this filament is it peeling off the bed. And I'll get into the main issues in a second here after we go through all the settings. Um, flow. Flow was also an important one or your extrusion multiplier. And I have to give credit to Angus over at Maker's News because I was having a lot of issues with this. And he recommended with his flex flexible filament kind of instructions or how to to increase the flow multiplier by a couple points and I did that and I had a lot more success once I did that. So I'm at 102. I did some successful prints at 101. Um, altogether it was great. Uh, if I didn't say it, no retraction. No retraction. That was another uh, Maker's News thing. He said no retraction. On the advanced setting, the initial layer, I think initial layer, same thing, multiplier 102. Um, Play with your cooling, your active cooling with your fan. I did a print where I forgot to put the hood around the nozzle, and it printed just fine. Um, I think it was one of the Pirate Caribbean's coins, so again, it was a really small, uh, thin print. But um, cooling's a, an important, and that's the whole issue with this filament is cooling, cooling, cooling. If you can't get it to cool um, all at once, then you're going to get layer separation and other issues. So the, let's go through the main three problems I had and what I did to solve them. One was bed adhesion. And the, when I first started, it was just peeling off the bed almost immediately. And within like two or three layers, it would just peel off the bed. And I just have a regular heated bed with a blue tape on it. And what I found is a large brim, hairspray or some kind of glue, which machinable wax does recommend and a heated first layer at the at the very least those three things 
So that solved my bed adhesion problems for the most part. I still get it every once in a while. Um, layer separation. A lot of issues with layer separation. And I found that to solve that, or at least to help solve it, because I still get it even now uh, occasionally, is the hotter extrusion temperature, but not too hot. So the lower extrusion temperatures are like 130, 135, I'd get lots of layer separation and it, it was just having issues. So I increased the, the temperature up to 140, 145 and, and that helped solve it. More flow, by increasing your flow uh, multiplier, it allows more of that filament to kind of shoot out and push against the previous layer and help uh, bond. And then slower prints. The print speed needs to be slow enough to allow that um, that layer to adhere to the previous layer. Um, three, cooling. And, and I've said this before. Cooling is the biggest issue with this filament. So play with your active cooling and see what, you know, what it affects what. Um, if you print ABS and you have an enclosure, you're probably going to have a lot of success with this filament because you, you can allow the whole model to cool uniformly. I don't have an enclosure and I even thought about even building one just because I was having issues. So uh, I do recommend an enclosure and it probably will help, although I can't say for sure because I haven't tried it. So here's the cube that I printed during the while I was making this uh, video. And as you can probably see, there's a little hole at the very top right hand uh, side of the cube where it didn't fill completely and you can't see but there's a little bit of layer separation on this far right corner um, and this is the bad of this filament is that even when you get your your settings dialed in you still will get small issues with the prints and I've played with it a lot you, st you will get good prints but for no rhyme or reason you'll get some layer separation or bed adhesion or little holes in the print and that's the bad now let's get to the good. Okay, so for the good, the good thing about this filament is that it's easily manipulated after the print. You can smooth it out with heat, although you have to be careful. You can carve it very easily. It's not like PLA where it's so hard that you know you have to sand it for long periods of time and it creates all this dust. Um, or, or if you wanted to carve something into it, it's gonna be pretty difficult. The wax is very easily manipulated with a razor blade. You can carve away the portions of it. And um, like I said, you can smooth it out and get rid of the layer lines with just a little bit of heat. Like that. Somewhat like that. That wasn't so successful, but it works. The other thing is specifically for casting, which if you're not casting, then there's really no reason to get this kind of filament. But if you're casting, here's a, a, a cast that I did of the pirate coin, and you can see the burnout is super clean. It didn't leave any residue behind, and that's really nice. Also, it burns out at a really low temperature and fairly quickly. See, with PLA, it takes hours upon hours at a really high temperature to burn out, and then it leaves this nice soot behind. And that transfers onto your cast, whereas this filament, it doesn't. And it lowers the burnout time, depending on the model, to only uh, 20 minutes at that. So that's the good thing about this filament. Now, another bad thing I would say is that it's about $60 a roll. The rolls are pretty large, so you'll get a lot of usage out of it, but considering you can get a roll of PLA for, what, $20, $30, you know, it's almost twice the price. But if you are doing casting, I'd say it's probably worth it because uh, you're going to spend a lot less fuel burning out the, P, uh, the, the wax filament than you are the PLA, and you can carve it and manipulate it after the print. Well, guys, I hope you liked this review. I know it got a little long, but there was a lot to talk about. If you like this, go ahead and hit like. Um, and if you want to see my other videos, casting videos, and so on and so forth, hit subscribe. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching.